Hey everyone, this is Wei and welcome back. Let's draw a couple of spoons and I know this might sound really simple but it's actually very important because I'm going to be talking about the basics of drawing and how you can draw these uh, kind of spoons with different properties. So let's get started and I'll talk about the process along the way. Alright, so let's draw this metal spoon and because of the metal texture, um, you know, the texture you see in there is actually reflecting the environment. So just kind of keep that in mind. So the best thing to do this kind of stuff is very simple, right? The shape, let's see. Um, so it just here's the head. So I'm just kind of rough in. It's kind of like this egg shape. I know it's not necessarily to that shape yet. And then I'll draw the handle. And if you want, you can actually do like a line like this. Just kind of, it's almost like a guideline, you know, just to give you um, an idea of the slant so that you can kind of follow it a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna do the handles right now and it is, a, and this is not necessarily easy because it's a very elegant curve, right? So sometimes, you know, really simple curves and it's actually kind of difficult to do and it, it is very difficult to try to match it exactly. And that's one of the things about these, these simple things is like drawing a vase and this one's at an angle, so it's not symmetrical, so. But still, the curves is still very complex. And let's see, all right, so let's, so here it is, the rough shape, and you know, if, if, if you're doing this and it doesn't turn out to be exactly this kind of shape, you know, to your reference, it's okay. Because, you know, as long as you can do, as long as you can shade it, right, correctly, I mean, it'll still be a, nice looking spoon as long as it's not like too crazily warped or anything. So yeah, don't kill yourself over that. All right, so this is very uh, rough, but I think I kind of got the shape. So what's gonna bring it out is obviously the, the shading on this, right? Because, and this is by far the trickiest part. So with this kind of stuff, what you can do is just kind of look in into the, um, the darkest area first. So like here, there's this reflection right here. And instead of shading, um, you know, normally if you're doing like a portrait or drawing anything else, sometimes you, you go with the lights first, you know, shading some of the lighter areas and then you go darker and darker. In this case, um, because there's so much contrast, it's really, there's not a lot of mid-tones. It's just really, um, you're basically going from almost pitch black, you know, into, into like almost white. So, so we can actually go in. Okay. So here's some midtones right here. And then this is dark and it might not look at, look like anything yet. And that's really how, you know, when you draw metal stuff, it's, it really takes everything to come into play before you can start feeling, you know, the, the realism and, and, and the form. So just kind of, you know, be a little patient, <laughs> you know, don't try to um, rush it too much. All right, so here, and again, you know, we don't necessarily have to shade in that close to the reference as long as it's somewhat close. Because again, it's reflecting the environment and the environment can really be anything, right? So that's why it doesn't need to be that exact. But it still kind of needs that structure. And I am using a 4B here. This is a mechanical pencil. You guys see me use a lot. Um, it's basically just a lead holder and the lead is 4B. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna do the rim here, the edge. So the edge right here is dark. So I'm turning my pencil once in a while so I can get like a sharper edge, right? Because when you start shading you'll notice that you know your tip starts to get a little bit flat out a little bit the strokes become a little bit broader that's why you gotta turn your pencil when you want those sharp edges and you'll see that a lot i mean you know it's like almost every artist that you see see them draw they're constantly readjusting their pencil the rotation of the pencil all right, so let's see. Now the shadow in here comes into play too. So I'm just gonna draw a line because I'm not gonna draw the shadow yet. But the shadow is gonna bring out this whole part, right? 
So let's continue with the contour a little bit. Let's clean up the lines a little. Let's see, make sure I'm still in frame. This thing is kind of almost at a 45 degree angle. Now, if you're drawing this and you know this angle is a little bit odd, it's like I, it's like I feel like I, I gotta turn my body a lot. It's because you know this kind of angle is a lot harder as opposed to this angle. Like if I were drawing it like this, it's probably easier because my wrist goes in that direction. Um, so just keep that in mind. You know, some some certain ang ang angles will be a little bit more uncomfortable, and you can always turn the paper if you want, but. I'm not gonna turn it around just so that, yeah, you know, because I'm doing it in front of the camera, so if I turn my paper too much, I might go off frame. All right, so here's some more shading. Uh, this is some mid-tone right here. And again, be patient, because once you put in the shadow, you see everything kind of come alive. It'll kind of lift off the, uh, the paper. All right, so right here, more shading. And then there's a little bit of edge. So it is a little dark because the there's some you know curvature on right on the edge. So as it's rolling away, it's reflecting the environment a little bit. And that's why you get those dark areas. So like right here, this edge right here is a little bit darker. A little bit darker here. Turn my edge, just kind of push it in. You know, don't um, don't baby it too much. Just kind of go in and, like right here is really dark, just go in and just kind of hit it. You know, don't worry about, you know, sometimes if the strokes are not that clean, it's okay. You know, that's the whole drawing process. If you're if you become a little bit too timid, what happens is um, actually shows through in your drawing and it, it looks a little scared, you know, like the shading and stuff. All right, so here's some, I know that sounds weird, like how can it be scared, but, but you know what I mean. It's like if the drawing is a little bit touchy-touchy, you just, you can see that the, uh, the artist was very timid in making the strokes. Like even here, like I probably should have changed my pencil. This is a 4B. Like if I change to a, let's say like a, this is a B with a B lead, I can actually just go in and shade it a lot faster because I know it won't get as dark, so I can just kind of push it, push it into the paper a little bit more. I don't, you know, with the 4B here, I really have to be light on my hand. So like if I change to the B, I know there's a little bit of shading here, I can actually just kind of push it a little bit, push it into the paper. You know, that way it won't get too dark. But let me just work with the four since, you know, it's if you don't have different gradation of the grades of the pencil, you know, this way you can, it's, it's all doable, you know, don't worry about it. It's actually very good practice for your hand too. All right, so it's kind of getting there, right? You can kind of feel a little bit more. All right, so let's do the shadow here. Uh, so this is gonna bring out the form so right here is dark. So I'm just trying to follow the curvature here. And this is gonna be lighter. And I'm not I'm not gonna change my pencil. Just so that I can show you that you know it's it's doable. It's good practice. It's a nice look too, you know, with softer pencils, you get a really nice dark and broad stroke. So it's good and bad. I'm gonna turn my pencil here because this is a really sharp edge. I'll bring it out a little bit more. And I know I probably, I probably need some white right here. Looks like I kind of covered it a little bit more, right? Too much. So what I'll do is I'll just I'll probably erase it out. Either with, probably with my electric eraser. 
All right, so this is a little bit lighter. As it gets down here, it's gonna be dark. So I'm gonna start hitting it a little bit harder and this is a very hard edge because there's not a lot of space between the shadow and the, I mean the, the, the surface and the, and the spoon. So this area right here becomes very tight and it's gonna soften up. And these are just, you know, shadow properties, but it's things that you kind of want to keep in mind, you know, because if you do this shadow right here wrong, if it's too uniform, uh, then you lose the whole shape, right? Like it, it doesn't feel that real to you. So you got to be a little bit careful, just kind of, just, just look at it, you know, careful observation, like even like right here, See, make sure I'm in frame. All right. All right, so right here is dark. And right here, it's a little bit lighter. But it also comes out a little bit more too. Okay. And then this is even darker here. So I'm gonna push it just a little bit. Get a little bit more darks in there. All right, so, so you can see how subtle it is, right? But it does make a difference. And that's the whole thing about, you know, drawing something that is a little bit more real, you know, it just, it takes a little bit more, you know, observation in terms of the, the shadow shading, the subtle shading. And right here, I know this side, it's, it's a little bit darker. I guess the light is not hitting as much. So like even here, um, I'll talk about the, see right here, this area is actually brighter because it's closer to the table, right? So it's getting a lot of reflective light. Whereas this part right here, it's kind of higher up a little bit. So it's not getting as much. That's why it's a little bit darker, but also because the shadow down here is a little bit lighter. So this part becomes, looks a little bit darker. So just, just by contrast, you know, because I have a dark shadow here, that's why this part is white. I have a very light shadow here, that's why this feels dark. So it's little things like that, you know, just trying to keep in mind. You know, drawing is, you know, black and white, it's really all about contrast. All right, so let's make this edge a little bit darker. All right, so that's okay. So I mean, I'm looking at the camera right now and yeah, if you, so if you look at it far away, right, so it's kind of semi-realistic, so yeah, I don't know if I, I might be done with this already. I don't know how much more to push it. Yeah, I might, I might, you know, take it in and shade it a little bit more later, but I think overall I kind of, you kind of get the idea how you can do a simple spoon like this, reflective spoon. All right, so this will be my metal spoon. All right, so let's do another spoon. And this one is uh, kind of, the you know, the, the regular soup spoons that you see. So this is, this is porcelain. So it's a little bit lighter in terms of uh, reflectiveness. So it doesn't reflect the surface as the environment as much. All right, so let me see. All right, so here is the base. And here I'm just gonna go up for the handle. So this is kind of like a bowl, right? So this is right here circular and then here's the bottom. So you can actually do something like that. Okay, so this is the top here. So I'm just gonna do the top first. I mean, there's a few ways to draw something like this, this kind of geometric thing, shapes. So here's the top, right? So once you have the top, then we can put in the, the volume. Here's the bottom. I come in, come down, I mean, all right, and then this is gonna be, it gets thinner and thinner, all right, and then here is the bottom of the spoon, and just kind of outline that a little bit, all right. Now this time I'm gonna, I'm, I'm using a 2B because this is a little bit softer, so it's not as, um, as dark. All right, so let's shade this because without shading, you won't see anything on this. This kind of surface. All right, so here is, I'm gonna start shading here. Uh, maybe I should draw a little bit cleaner. All right, let, let me draw a little bit cleaner line here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna draw like, sometimes like too 
hard of a line on these things because a lot of it is going to come out in shading. But if you don't, if you don't outline it a little bit, you know, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see what you're shading, you know, where, where, where the shading starts and ends. So. All right, so let's just shade a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to do the shadow yet. All right, so let's shade this. So this is, this time I'm going to go a little bit lighter and now I'll hit the, I'll go in again and kind of hit the dark, make it a little bit darker. So this is just kind of like, uh, just like cross hatching, I guess, but just one direction for now. All right, so there's a little highlight here. Probably missed it. Probably should have kept that white. All right, let me just erase this real quick. Just like that. Here's a kneaded eraser. Very good for erasing, you know, that kind of like sharper edge or whatever. All right, so here's one shade. And then we'll go in. Looks like this edge is a little bit darker. So I'm going to cross hatch. Going this way. And I'm still very light on, on, on my hand, on the strokes. I don't want to hit it too hard yet. I'm just going to let things build up. Okay. Dark. Okay, so there's a distinction here. This edge right here is a little bit darker. Let's make this a little bit darker too, just so I can get a little bit more contrast between these two. All right, so let's go down here. Let's do this again. This is darker than this, all right? Wait, I'm seeing some little, yeah, this, there's a little edge right here. So this is what happens, you know, as you start shading, you're gonna start seeing more and more, um, you know, subtle surface properties. And that's what's gonna make your drawing kind of pop out, look a little bit more real. All right, so this is darker here. This will be my second pass. This is dark here. And I'll probably switch pencils. Um, this is a 2B, so it's fairly light. All right, so I'm gonna switch back to my four, just so I can get a little bit dark, more dark. All right, so let's hit the shadow now so I can bring this spoon into life. All right, so here, darkest edge right here because this is the contact point. So no light, it's getting in, or very little light. And then it's gonna flare out. So very soft, just kind of very soft in my hand. Kind of these circular shapes, just these little wiggle shapes. Just kind of go all the way around. And I can actually use a 2B, you know, for this because it's softer, but it's okay. Again, yeah, as long as we control the, you know, how, how hard you push into it, it's fine. All right, so let's make it a little bit darker now. Just going to hit this a little bit harder. Again, still very soft, okay? I mean, because the shadow is very, it's very diffused, right? It's very soft. Soft lighting, product photography, big, big soft box. That's what you get. Big area lights, you know, you'll get this kind of soft shadowing. So you see by making this shadow right here, all of a sudden this area becomes very light, right? Just because of the contrast. So let's make this a little bit darker. Yeah, this spoon is not as exciting as the metal. I think I like the metal one better. <laughs> you know, definitely in terms of realism and get a little bit more punch. I mean, this one is so 
light. It's a very high key. But we could always exaggerate it. Let's let's make this a little bit darker. Since I have my 4B here. Because I think yeah, I think it should be a little bit darker. So sometimes, you know, it's okay if you want to exaggerate things. That's how it actually makes the drawing more interesting. Okay. So I think, yeah, I don't know. What else is there? Other than, other than going back and cleaning up stuff, I mean, most of the stuff is here. So it's just a matter of, now it's just a matter of touch up, like, you know, how much time do you want to spend going back and do shading stuff, but I think the drawing process itself is pretty much there. So let's say, take the 2B. Let's just give this a little bit more shading right here. Very subtle, there's a little bit of gradation here. And even on the handle, right? It's a little bit of shading because, again, this is a kind of like a warp sh shape. It's like a cylinder, so it's stretching the environment. That's why you see these long shadows because it's reflecting the uh, environment. It's kind of stretching it for these kind of reflective surfaces. But it's not as hard as the metal one because it's porcelain. Okay, so I can actually go in, like, you know, with this 2B, if I shade in different direction, you, you can see how I can smooth things out, right? Make it a little bit more, uh, just filling in the gaps, you know, a little bit more real. So it doesn't matter how much you want to push this. And here, I'm seeing something right here, very light. Soften this up a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm gonna stop. So it's like, things like this is like, sometimes, it's, you know, how much effort do you wanna, you can keep doing this, I mean, if you want, just, you know, just don't wanna get too carried away. All right, so I think uh, that's it for this tutorial, and these will be my two spoons, and hope you guys uh, like this kind of simple stuff, because it's actually very useful, I know the, the subject matter is really, really simple, but the process is the same, you know, anything, um, anything more complex is just a series of very basic shapes. So, hope you guys uh, learn from these kind of videos, and if you do enjoy them, please do give me a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.